In this video, we're going to talk about chargers. In particular, I'm going to tell you how we can replace all three of these chargers with one of these chargers. Let's get into it. These days, many of us have multiple devices. I myself have a phone, a tablet, and a laptop computer. Some of us have multiple phones, multiple tablets, multiple laptops, that they all require charging because they all have batteries in them. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And in this video, we're talking about chargers. And now chargers have been traditionally made out of a material called silicone. Now silicone is able to conduct electricity and give you power pretty well, but a lot of manufacturers are moving to GAN chargers. That's capital G, lowercase a, capital N, gallium nitrate. Now gallium nitrate has a higher power density. It has a better power efficiency. Now, what does that mean for you? It means that you have a charger that can handle higher temperatures, deliver you more power in a smaller package. The unit of measurement we'll be using in this video is watts. Watts is amps times volts. Amps and volts are important, especially in other power applications such as solar power, EV cars, and even the power in your house. Now we'll be using watts in this video, which should be sufficient for talking about these consumer electronic chargers, especially these USB ones. Now watts has to do with the amount of power going into your electronic device. The more watts, the faster the charge. Now this is oversimplifying it. And of course you need to have the proper cables and every device actually has a maximum amount of watts it can intake. So for example, I have my M1 Mac uh, iPad Pro here. This is the 11 inch version and it ships with a 20 watt charger. I can, but I can plug in a 65 watt charger into it. And it'll charge up at a maximum of 30 watts. Of course you need to have the proper chargers and the proper cables. And especially in the early days of USB-C, some of them didn't have the proper chips in them to regulate the amount of power going through. So it could potentially fry some of your electronic devices. But most USB-C cables these days have the proper cables. So it's really not something to worry about. I'll be talking about these two chargers. These two chargers have pretty much the same design. They have two USB-C ports, one USB-A port. They deliver a total of 65 watts. They both have these retractable prongs that you plug into an outlet. This one's made by a company called BuyEasy. This one's made by a company called Tenu. Now BuyEasy and Tenu are your typical Chinese brands on Amazon. They only sell on Amazon. They don't even have their own website. And I was actually surprised to see that BuyEasy has their contact information on the box, which you typically don't see. These two chargers are pretty much clones of the Anchor 735 charger, also known as the Nano 265 watt charger. They had the same basic design, same amount of ports. They all deliver 65 watts of charge to your devices. And they all use something called intelligent power allocation. Meaning, depending on what you have plugged into these ports, let's say you're using all the ports, it'll distribute the power to all these three ports accordingly. Now, these are 65 watt chargers. That's 65 watts total output. It doesn't mean 65 watts per port. So the allocation, let's say for all three of these chargers, if you only have one device plugged into the main USB-C port, it has a maximum potential of 65 watts of output for every charger here, right? But let's say all three ports are being used on these chargers. So for the BuyEasy and the Tenu, the way it distributes it is 45 watts and then it shares 15 watts for the remaining ports. On the Anchor, it does 40 watts and then 12 watts, 12 watts. So it distributes it evenly to the remaining ports. So that's an, one small way they differentiate right, between these chargers. The other way they differentiate is on the output of the USB-A port. So let's say you only have one device plugged into the USB-A port. On the Anchor, they say that they deliver 22 and a half watts of power on the USB-A port. On the Tenu, it says 30 watts of power, and the BuyEasy claims that they can do 36 watts of power. I'm gonna see if I can do some tests to kind of verify that. But of course, the main way that these three chargers differentiate is the price. So as of this recording, the Anchor is on actually on sale for $45 now. Uh, typically, they're almost about $60 chargers. 
And then the Buy Easy retails for about $27. The Tenu retails for about $23. Of course, I got these on sale or with the Vipon coupon. If you don't know, Vipon is an Amazon coupon site. So I got these for pretty cheap. Now I don't have the Anchor to test out, but one thing that you do get with Anchor is the customer service and the brand recognition. So their spec sheets are pretty accurate, but I'm gonna do some quick tests to see if these stack up to the Anchor itself. Now it's been a few days and I've been testing out these two chargers. Now I don't have the proper equipment. I could have bought a kind of pass through USB meter on Amazon that'll give me the wattage, voltage, amperage that's drawing from these two chargers. I'm actually using my Apple laptop and actually any modern Apple laptop, you should be able to get the wattage that you're drawing from your chargers. You just go to system information and then under power, you can see how much is being drawn from your chargers. As far as the USB-A ports on both of these chargers, I wasn't able to pull more than five watts out of them. It's because they're using the quick charge standard and I don't have any devices that use quick charger anymore. Now, if for the larger devices or devices that need more power, such as my laptop or iPad, you're probably wanting to use USB-C port anyway. This is the way to draw more power and to do quick charge using power delivery. Both these chargers perform very well as advertised. Now, if you only have one device plugged into one of the USB-C ports on both chargers, you can draw the maximum 65 watts of charging. As soon as you plug in a second device into the second USB-C port, the main device goes down to 45 watts on both chargers. And then the second device on the Buy Easy, it goes down to 18 watts. On the Tenu, it goes down to 20 watts. On the Buy Easy, it doesn't matter which USB-C port is the main port it knows that which device is drawing more power, it'll send the 45 watts to that main device and 18 watts to the next device. Now on the Tenu one, the, you have something labeled here that's really hard to read, but it says type C1 and type C2. The 45 watts, if you have two devices plugged in, type C1 is the one that draws 45 watts or sends 45 watts and type C2 is the one that does 20 watts. Now, of course, once you plug in another third device into the USB-A cable, you know, the power goes down a little bit more. The distribution is a little bit different. Now, the thing that's annoying about the Buy Easy is as soon as you plug in any device in or out, what happens is the charger stops for a couple seconds and then turns back on because it's trying to negotiate how many, what devices are plugged in and what power should be distributed. And that can be kind of annoying depending on what you have plugged in at a given time. Now having a three port charger is very convenient. Now, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I have my M1 MacBook Air. I mainly plug that into the main port, USB-C port. Then I could plug in my iPad Pro into the other USB-C port. Then the USB-A port, I could plug in either my iPhone or if I had an Apple Watch, I can charge that all, all at the same time. Now, one scenario I've been using these type of chargers is for hybrid church events. So uh, during the hybrid church events, I have my laptop plugged in. Then I actually use my USB-A port here to power up my GoPro Hero 7. I use this as a wide angle webcam uh, for the hybrid events. And then of course I can have the other port being used to charge up my iPad at the same time. So it's very, very versatile. Now, of course, if you have a higher end Apple laptop, like the 16 inch uh, la uh, MacBook Pro with M1 Max chip, now you, this may not be able to keep up. Those things can draw up to about 140 watts of power, but they, will, they still will charge those up, but they may not keep up with the power usage you're using with those laptops. Now, would I recommend getting these chargers? I would say definitely yes. These are great alternatives to the more expensive Anchor chargers. But between these two chargers, I would probably get the Tenu over the Buy Easy, mainly because on the Buy Easy, I mentioned about if you unplug or plug in some devices, it stops charging on the other devices for a second 
as it's trying to negotiate how much power to distribute. And that can get a little bit annoying, especially in the scenario of using my GoPro. It could potentially turn off the GoPro in that, in that scenario. So that can get pretty annoying. But besides that, you really can't go wrong with either of these chargers. I will say again that the type of cable you use does affect the amount of wattage you can pull how much power you can pull. So I have an Amazon Basics USB-C cable here, and I have the Apple USB-C cable that came with my M1 MacBook Air. Now the Amazon Basics one could only draw 60 watts of power. It's rated at 60 watts, and that's what showed up on my laptop as far as the power it was drawing. And then the Apple one actually, even though it came with a 30 watt charger, it was able to draw the full 65 watts of power. I'll have links to all the chargers and cables I talked about in this video in the description below, including the Anchor one as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.